I'm Selena Trepp. I'm an artist. I'm an artist, I work in many different ways in many different media, but lately most of the work that I've been making has been animation, different kinds of animation, stop motion animation and hand drawn animation. When I do stop motion, what I actually am doing is I take a photo and then I move everything that's within the frame or the shot of what I'm taking and move everything in there just a hair and take another photo. And then I continuously do this and as I take these pictures with slight motion, I then take them into the computer and I just flip them like a flip book and just show them for a fraction of a second. Stop motion for my own work and really as sort of a main aspect of my work, which it has become lately in the last few years, really started with the piece rotation. And rotation came out of my practice, which has been for a long time has been based upon this idea of working with what I have. And what that means is that I, in 2012, which is a long time ago, I decided, I said, hey, I'm only going to, I'm not bringing any new materials into my studio and the pieces that I make, which then were mostly photos, are going to be made up of the materials that I have here. <clears throat> and so over time, what this meant is my materials had, took a, a lot of different roles in the pictures that I was making. And as I was making this, my relationship to all my materials also started changing because if you can't get new stuff into your space, you really need to reuse your things. And so a piece of foam might be a leg in one piece, and then in the next piece, it might be an architectural element, and so on. And so as I was getting ready for a show, for a solo show at Cleve County Gallery, College of DuPage, I had mostly photo work and drawings for that exhibition ready. And then I really felt like I wanted to have one more different kind of piece and I wanted it to be a video piece. And I was just did not quite know what I wanted to do. And then one night as I was on a long bike, bike ride, biking is generally where I get the best ideas I have to say. So as I was biking, I suddenly had this thought of imagining that my studio when I'm not there has a life and that all my materials in my studio when I'm not there do all kinds of stuff and they have their parties, and their get-togethers, and it's just like a whole sort of world that happens. And then as soon as I get in, they go back into their, their stale, dead state. And I thought, that's the video. That's what I want to do. So having an exhibition with all the pieces, the photos of these materials, and then having these materials actually showing their other life. And I really like the idea of using stop motion in particular, because stop motion and animation as a process is, in a way, a metaphysical process, if you think about it. Because what you're doing is you're creating something animate or alive from something that's inanimate by just photographing it. And so within the space of the film, it is a light, which is a valid reality. So I thought, okay, let's do that. <laughs> Went to my studio the next day and I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this. And my concept was that I would make a free, the camera would be set in the center of the room and it would rotate 360 degrees. So it would always begin and end the same way. And that everything would move. And I started animating it. And my process is very primitive in the sense that I don't use software to capture. I just capture into my camera and then I sequence on the computer. Since making rotation, which I would consider my first stop motion piece, I have continued in stop motion. Then the next piece was I work with what I have, which was a really long piece. And that really was very much like rotation in the sense that it is stop motion with all only things in my studio. It's much more limited in the sense that it actually is now edited. So one of the things I was thinking about was editing as opposed to loops. And then very specifically what it was about is when I showed rotation, the question I got very often was from people that would ask me, well, how did you come up with this? How did you conceive of this? Because in a lot of ways, it's very abstract. There are there is figuration in there, but it's also it's not like it's, it's, there's not a story that you can follow. It's not narrative in the traditional linear sense. And I real I would say like, why are you asking me this? I mean, don't you get something from it? But then I realized that the question really was like how that people when they look at images they expect a narrative in the in the sort of realm of language, right? And especially when you see something that's cinematic, you expect it to be language-based. But I really think about and thought about this much more in regards to dynamics, 
which is actually the realm of affect or music, where you go directly into the emotional part and you try to evoke an emotion and then that creates meaning with the viewer. And I said, eventually I realized, I was like, you know, think about if somebody's composing instrumental music, how they come across or what they think about. That's how I think about these animations. It's really thinking about the tension that I'm trying to create or a mood that I'm trying to evoke, but not necessarily a specific story, like it happened here, but more like how did it feel when it happened here and try to get that from the audience. And so as I was talking about that, I thought, actually what I really would like to do is I would like to make an animation that is very explicitly evocative or visual music that is trying to compose like you would compose music and to really think about dynamics in that way. And then that was the next piece that I made, which was I work with what I have. And that is that motion really still very much from the world and about my studio, but much more thinking about A, that I knew that I was going to have musicians perform it, improvisers that would perform the score based on just watching it and really thinking about this idea that this film would communicate to musicians which, who would then respond and perform with it as a line of the music, not necessarily the score, but as a line of the music. And that there would be two different kinds of times where my composition, the film, would took three years to make, but then the improvisers didn't have time to look at it a hundred times over and then perform it, but I showed it to them once before and then they performed it. And really thinking about these two different kinds of um, creativities that can happen at the same time. And also thinking about this idea of, if you think about like improvisation and composition and where they cross over, like this little spot in the middle, that's where I wanted to locate this work. And so that's the last big work that I made that was last year. It premiered in September 2019. And that then was supposed to have and did have a little bit of a run, but it was supposed to go many, many places this year, which I was postponed. Like everything. But there are good things when things get postponed too. So what happened is, I mean, I'm really sad that I'm not showing it, but I've actually been really working a lot, despite the fact that I have a family and it's homeschooling and all those things, um, I've managed to carve out time and I've been working on a new piece, which is still stop motion, but now is much more about what's going on. I wanted to do work that's more reflective of this time, actually. And so I had a sort of painting breakthrough. I've always <clears throat> wanted, like I've been painting for a long time, but I feel like I've, I've never quite reached what I wanted to reach and then this somehow this spring I broke had a breakthrough where I'm like okay I actually managed to do something with painting that I really like but then it's so absurd because of course now nobody can see it because it's just not like nobody can see things in real life everything is a virtual exhibition <laughs> and I'm actually making things right now that would be nice to see in like non-virtual sense and so I thought well this is funny and then just combined with like all the sort of virtual exhibition emails from galleries and museums that I'm getting I thought, you know, I'm going to make my virtual exhibition in my studio and make a stop motion that is sort of like an avatar of me or the gallerist. And so that's what I've been doing. So I set up one half of my studio is now completely like white space. And I hung the stuff and I have this thing and everything moves though. So I'm working on this animation that's kind of a studio, a, yeah, kind of a <laughs> virtual exhibition. And it's also like I'm very, I'm having the character like voice thing. So I'm also working a lot with sound and I'm just using my very primitive singing into my phone and then just cutting it up on the computer and like syncing it onto the, and I have no idea what it's going to be, but I'm actually really excited about the work. Like I'm like, okay, I'm making the best of the situation at least. It's going to be a kick-ass virtual exhibition.
when people watch my work, I would, there's a lot of things I want to get them to get out of it. But I think the main thing that I really want people to get out of it is this, this idea that you can do something that you shouldn't be held back by any kind of sort of, I mean, life is tough and there's always a lot of things that stop you or that are there to stop you. And I think my work in the way that it's made and that it's sort of non, like it's made with the most basic materials, simple stuff. Like if you really look at it, you can see like it's not, there's no, it's not marble and gold and bronze. It's like dust and pieces of like, painted tinfoil and things like that. So it's very achievable, but through work and through like taking sort of care and love into it, just putting a lot into it, I was able to sculpt it and give it life and give it this joy. So that would be one thing that I would want people to get out of it, of just seeing that it's really more about what you put into something is what, is what creates it, not what it originally was, but really the labor and the love or that that's, and that it's achievable, that it doesn't, it's not glossed over. And the other thing I would really, I think, to me is really important and appealing is that my work is seductive. I think I want people to be, to get joy out of it and pleasure. I think it's very pleasurable um, and accessible in a lot of ways because it has this kind of like direct, you're just like, wow, this is magic, which is, that's what animation is, right? It's, that's the thing. It's sexy in that way. And I want that. I want pe to give people that gift. I like work like that. I want to be engaged by it. But I think the, the combination of this accessibility and then also the accessibility technically that it's taken, it's done with very simple means and anybody could do it. I think those are the main things that I want for people to walk away with. <laughs>